What's up VC? This is Brad from H2 Vinyl. It's another morning. Another mug of Keto tea. This is my entry to the nicest. Not one of the nicest. The nicest guys in the vinyl community and that is Bill the Vinylverse. Bill, you can't say anything. This is my video for you. <laughs> um, ongoing thing between us. Uh, <laughs> Bill, um, thank you for your friendship, man. Um, I've been getting to know you for about three years now. You were one, if not the first. You were one of the first, but I think you might have been one of the, actually maybe even the first. Um, subscriber subscriber to my channel um, even before you had your vinyl verse name before you had your channel and uh, I think I don't know if you remember this but you actually reminded me that this was when you started posting to my videos with the vinyl verse signature it made the connection you made the connection for me hey I've been <laughs> commenting for a while I'm like oh gosh yes yes you have <laughs> I don't know if you remember that but um, yeah uh, over the course of the last few years uh, really have enjoyed getting to know you and um, your heart your um, your love for music and uh, even now as we chat on Facebook and Messenger uh, yeah um, Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is in celebration of you and your channel, 700 subs and two years contest. And I'm recording this on Sunday, the 5th. Uh, probably won't have this uploaded until Thursday, the 8th. You have, as everyone's seeing this video, you have about two more days to enter this contest. Uh, so, they're easy questions. They really are. There are four questions and then a bonus question, which isn't... Yeah, I mean, you have to do some research to, you know, get a right answer for that one. But it's definitely doable. And I think I got it about an hour, hour of research or something. <laughs> um, yeah. So, let's get into these questions. I've got like two hours on the audio recorder. I got two hours on the camera. Let's just hang out, right? I promise. Won't make that vi the, this video that long, I promise. So the first question is, how did you discover the VC? And what got you starting to make videos? <clears throat> well, this is going to probably be the longest answer. Um, and... <laughs> There are four questions, five questions, and uh, good luck, Brad. <laughs> um, let's see if I can make this coherent. Um, I've shared this story before pretty well <laughs> in another video. Let's see if I can do it again. I have a very roundabout, meandering way into the VC. It all stems from a movie I don't actually have the movie on Blu-ray. Yeah, my Blu-ray collection is very, very old. <laughs> but at 10 years old, I haven't bought a movie in a while. Um, but I do have it on the soundtrack on, uh, on vinyl. And this is Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. You're like, Brad, how did a Marvel movie get you into the VC? Well, Star-Lord... Chris Pratt's character, in his ship he had a cassette deck made of wood and, and everything like that and thought it was the coolest thing in the world. So I remember like at some point a week or so after that movie, I was like, I wonder if something like that exists. So I checked eBay. Yeah, no, it was totally custom built <laughs> for the movie. But uh, that got me into, you know, 
really would like a reel-to-reel -reel deck. I've always wanted a reel-to-reel -reel deck. And found one on eBay. Uh, Ruskin, Florida was the seller. A guy from Ruskin, Florida, which is in the Tampa Bay area. And uh, yeah, I uh, contacted him, see if I could pick it up. I paid for it. Picked it up on a Sunday after, uh, Sunday morning. I want to say it was late, like August 2013 or something like that. A couple of years before I even found the VC. See, I told you I'm going to be meandering, um, but hope you enjoy the story. <laughs> um, picked it up from him. He threw in a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, tape hubs. Uh, free tape um, because he didn't have to pay for shipping and go through all that hassle. Um, yeah, he didn't have to, he didn't, he didn't have to ship it. I paid for shipping. So I essentially did extra work to pick it up. That's what I meant. So after getting this, um, messing around with it for a little while, uh, had a lot of fun doing that. Um, it's a TIAC, 1000X, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, um, the thought was I was going to put my vinyl to reel to reel, which I knew nothing about a turntable, really. Um, I had that uh, Stanton T80, still have it um, around here. It doesn't have a cartridge on it right now. And I had about 100 albums at the time. So I thought, yeah, I'll just buy seven or eight reel-to-reels. Each one of these 10-inch reel-to-reels can hold you know, four hours of music, something like that. So, yeah, I'll, I'll get all the stuff. And, like, I've listened to some of those recordings. And do they sound god-awful? <laughs> um, I had no... No idea on how to tune a turntable properly. Um, didn't even know there was a counterweight. I just put that weight at the end all the way to the front. Had no idea about um, pressure on the needle being too much or just right or not enough. Had no idea on any of that stuff. I've learned a lot <laughs> in the last five or six years. And... Um, Anyway, uh, that kind of got me into the bug of uh, buying vintage gear. And somewhere in all of that, I started looking up vintage gear on YouTube. And came across a channel, Beninsky707. I mentioned Beninsky before. I believe uh, his name is Mark. Uh, Mark doesn't make videos anymore. I think the last video he's made was uh, like two years ago. And uh, he actually saw one of my videos. Uh, I think it was Brandon, Mr. Hall of Fame's uh, 6,000 contest video last summer. And uh, he commented, because <laughs> really, uh, Mark has an amazing, not just collection of records, but an amazing collection of turntables and a few of those turntables uh, I have kind of wanted something like that in my house too not saying I'm collecting turntables but I got a number of them now um, <laughs> but I want to say Beninsky was one of the first uh, VC members that I watched but I didn't even know anything about the VC. This is just a guy that was talking about his turntables. I was like, wow, that's a really cool turntable. That Kenwood turntable, I think it's the KD650. It was called the Rock because uh, the plinth was made out of limestone and glass that was glued together. Well, that's cool. I wonder if I can find something like that. I did. Found a guy um, in Sanford. It wasn't the exact same model, but I had something like it. 
So, and then later on found a Denon. That's the main deck that I um, play all my needle drops from. So I'm picking up various components. And as I'm getting more into gear, I'm spending, you know, couple thousand on this gear i'm like i'm doing this all for a hundred records <laughs> let's get more records so in 2015 i bought around 2500 <laughs> and so um yeah and then i got to wondering like how do i clean these a lot of these are dirty um i'm uh, so I started looking up vacuum cleaners, like vacuum cleaners for vinyl. And that's when I ran into even more VC members, uh, Supra Wes, Wes, a good friend. Um, uh, he is another one that I remember watching uh, off the bat and seeing a, a, him make a do-it-yourself video on how he made his own vacuum cleaner. Uh, vacuum cleaner record you know what I mean and um, yeah uh, so I started watching his videos and saw oh he's talking about uh, his collection too that's pretty cool and then I think there was one that he and Mark connected and they were talking about this vinyl community and then I I started watching um, Audiophile Laws. I know, uh, Bill, you know of Armin. I really wish Armin was still making videos. Um, started watching him, and then I found uh, James, the, the vinyl collector James. I think he called his channel something else at the time, um, but now he goes by vinyl collector James. Started watching his stuff, and then I came across uh, Brandon, Mr. Hall of Fame, and start watching his stuff. And I think I watched a good two years without commenting to anyone. And then one day I just was like, you know, I want to get on in, in on this. I was reading people's comments, seeing how nice people were, saw how nice everyone else to, his, to each other in uh, the videos that they made. Um, yeah, it was really, really cool. And so, uh, 2017, I saw this thing called the vinyl tag and like, I have absolutely no idea what vinyl tag even, even to this day, I kind of like, I have no idea. It's not like you're tagging a specific person and say, you're it. Now you make a video. No, it's just a list of questions. I'm, I don't know where vinyl tag came from, but anyway, um, yeah, I have never even done an intro video to my channel. It's a little late for that, isn't it? <laughs> Three years into it. But the intro video, I guess, my first video was the vinyl tag of 2017. And uh, yeah, I've been making them ever since. And made a lot of friends here. And so from reel to reel to recording records, to vi buying vintage gear, to buying more records, to cleaning them is kind of how I, long, long story, <laughs> but it's kind of how I got into the VC. And uh, yeah, really glad I did. Second question. Uh, show an album or two, and how about like eight, <laughs> that I learned of by watching others in the VC. Well, I have a second video in a series that I just finished doing and uploaded a couple days ago, um, a week ago by the time you see this video. I didn't want to repeat anything in that video, but some of these are repeats from the first video, which is like two years old now. Um, I learn a lot from the VC and yeah, I want to pick up a, a lot of stuff. But one of the, one of the first groups that I, uh, like, not one of the first groups I hadn't heard of, but one of the first groups that I'm like, your description of that was so intriguing. I'm going to check these guys out. 
and checked them out and loved them. And this was the OCs. Uh, this is a live album, live in San Francisco, released in 2016, July of 2016. Um, the OCs were mentioned to me by a guy who I don't think makes videos in the VC anymore, Joe L. J O space the letter L. And I think he changed his name after that. And I don't know if his channel even exists anymore. But Joe, I want to say in the San Francisco area or California area, it was like, hey, check these out. I think he was playing it in the background. And I was like, man. This guy, the, the, I don't know if he's spitting or if that's sweat. I'm pretty sure that's spittle. Anyway, <laughs> um, he is animated. And you can tell from this photo, this is animated. Like, he is an animated guy. This is John Dwyer on the front, lead uh, front man to the OCs. And I think I picked this album up the first, listened to it, really liked it. Started picking up more of their stuff. And uh, my favorite album by them is Orc. I've played that album so many times on my channel. Um, but this is another favorite. Um, this is Mutilator Defeated at Last. This is their 2015 album, released May 18th, 2015. And uh, yeah, this is such a great album. Um, I'm going to do a needle drop. How about that? We're going to play the song Web off of this. And if you don't know the OCs, they go by the OCs, by OCs, by the letter O, the letter C. They go by, I mean, any variation of the OCs, sometimes without the, sometimes with the. Anyway. Um, to play the song web they're california garage rock psych rock yeah great great stuff here they are This next one I learned from Andy Borders. At the time, his channel name, Andy's Vinyl Den. Another one I miss in the VC. Hope you're doing well, Andy, if you catch this. And uh, yeah, hope you're able to make videos again soon. Um, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Andy highly recommended this album, the 2016 album. I don't know what number this is but this is nanagon infinity bill if you want to get into king gizzard and the lizard wizard highly suggest this album uh, great great album i love i love this album um the they always have a premise this has a few premises uh nanagon nine songs infinity the album if you were able to loop the beginning to the end or the end to the beginning there you go uh, it would go on forever. So, Nanagon Infinity. It also done in 7-8 musical time signature, which the entire album, 7-8, which is like unheard of. Sometimes a song is done that by, you know, artists do a song or maybe a couple of measures to switch it up. Nope. King Gizzard did the entire album in 7-8s. They're kind of almost skipping forward in their music um, yeah, really, really great stuff. Um, I'm really, really glad that Andy mentioned this. He said, I want to say that this is one of his 10 perfect albums uh, that he had a video. He's he just like, show 10 perfect albums. Boom, this is a perfect album. Yeah, this is a really, really great one. Um, another one I picked up 
by them. Also another favorite. Uh, I have 13 of their 16, 15 albums, something like that. I'm missing a couple. Um, missing Gumboot Soup and something else. I don't remember what it is. Anyway, um, Murderer of the Universe. Uh, yeah, really great stuff. This is their 2017, June 2017 album. This is the year that they released five albums. Yes. Yeah. Five albums, 2017. That 2018, they took a year off. And then 2019, I think they released two. Um, yeah. I'll be doing a needle drop on this one. Uh, if you don't know King Gizzard, they're alt rock. They're psych rock, garage rock. No, forget the alt rock. I don't know what I was saying. Um, yeah, I play... I know where alt came from. Altered Beast. <laughs> the... <laughs> um, that's where alt rock I think came from. Anyway, Altered Beast uh, 2, I think. Anyway, here is that needle drop. It'll be in the needle drop. Uh, Altered Beast. This next one I bought, um, yeah, this is fairly early in my time in the VC. One of the first albums that I bought. I don't have a label on it, so I don't know when I got it or where I got it. But um, I learned this one from Paul Baraka P. Dub, another one that I learned so much from. And this is Serge Gainsborough. History of Melody Nelson, uh, translated there uh, from French. <sighs> Incredible. I mean, when you have a hype sticker that says something from Beck, you know it's got to be incredible. This is Light in the Attic reissue. Um, yeah, I think it was 2016 or 2017. I think I picked this up in the summer of 2017. I remember making a video on it. Maybe I, I should probably re-watch that video because maybe it'll give me any indication of where I bought this <laughs> and when I bought it. But anyway, perfect blend of rock and orchestra said by Beck. Yeah. And the French voice, deep voice of Gainsborough yeah, I was listening to this for the first time in like a year or two uh, while doing a needle drop. Hopefully I can do a needle drop. Um, hope YouTube allows me. Uh, yeah, I need to listen. I need to re revisit this album again. It's so, so good. The track that I play is Melody. Let's see if we can get away with this. Here it is by Serge Gainsborough. <laughs> Nous arrivâmes, Rolls et moi, dans une zone dangereuse, un endroit isolé. And this next one comes from vinyl collector James. And this is Foyuxoid. It's on a kind of a shiny gold. Let's see if I can. Foyuxoid. Ah, that might not appear. Uh, this is their third album, released in 2016, 2015, March the 31st, on Sacred Bones Records. This is a Chilean band. Psych rock, a little bit of drone metal in there as well at times. Um, 
the album one one LP, but uh, only four songs. So each song is you know, 10, 12 minutes. It's kind of difficult to get a good needle drop on just 30 seconds of a 10 to 12 to 15 minute song. Gonna try and do it. Um, I, yeah, I picked this up when, picked this up in December and I don't remember what video James mentioned, but I did share this in my other video. I should have watched that video, the, my first in the series of two videos. Um, <laughs> January uh, 2018 was when I made that video talking probably more about this album, um, which I did the needle drop of Electric. So I wanted to do something different for this one. And this is the song Pyur, P I U R E, Pyur. I'm so I'm gonna say, uh, yeah, really, really great stuff. And here is that needle drop. This next one up I revealed in just a regular Vinyl Finds video, but this was new to me. And it, the, the label was even new to me, though I kind of knew the label offhandedly. Anyway, this is from Steve Carlson. Steve is another one that I've learned a lot from. And Steve shows a lot of international music. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I know how much you hate the phrase world music, <laughs> so I was trying not to use it there. But um, yeah, I learned a lot of African beat music from Steve. This is not one of those, but this is a garage rock, psych rock band that wants to claim the 70s, but they're from the mid 2010s. And this is the Mystery Lights. I want to say this is their debut. Nah, I didn't say. And uh, the album, The Mystery Lights, bought this off of the Dap Tone label website because WIC, which is the label, is a subsidiary of Dap Tone. This is great. Like, this sounds like it's 20, 30 years old. Maybe even, yeah, yeah, 30 years old. Um, 40 years old? Maybe? I don't know. Um, yeah, four, 20, 30, 40. 20 isn't that long ago. 20 was 2000. <laughs> so, um, so maybe 40 years ago. <laughs> I just realized that. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, really, really great stuff. I play the song Without Me. Yeah. Definitely uh, need to check out Wick label. Um, I think they have some more stuff. Really need to check out Daptone label more as well. Daptone um, learned about the Bodos band from Andy Borders as well. Another great band. Um, here is Without Me by The Mystery Lights. buddy Jeff Kempen has gotten me into some new music as well. Um, this is my first VCLT and this is Buddy Guy, Stone Crazy. 
oh man, so good. 1981 album. This is a reissue, uh, 2012 reissue. Also learned about this from Andrew, Tales from the Crate. Uh, I played this several times, I think, on my channel. Um, but yeah, uh, but then Jeff has also got me into, uh, I knew of this group, so it wasn't like a surprise to me, though this type of music was surprising to me, and this was Fleetwood Mac. I am not a fan of Fleetwood Mac, except for their earlier work. Blues, blues rock, give it to me. Um, this is the Music on Vinyl reissue. Uh, pressed in 2011, but this is their 1968 album. So, yeah, really, really great stuff. Uh, and I thank Jeff for uh, pointing me in that direction to some good music from Fleetwood Mac. I'm sure I'm going to get hate from that statement. <laughs> Next one up uh, is the Dragon Ball Z of rock groups <laughs> I don't know how to say that but if you watch Dragon Ball Z you know what I'm referring to and this is Boris their album called Pink I want to say this 2005 I was way off I was a decade off um, but I uh, learned about this group from Andy Tales from the Crate Andy Andrew sorry Andrew. Uh, Tales from the Crate and uh yeah, really, really great drone metal, dirge metal, thrash, uh, post-punk, doom metal, funeral doom, hard rock, and then even stoner rock in there as well. I mentioned that they are the Dragon Ball Z of rock groups because their songs just go forever and ever and ever and... Dragon Ball Z, some episodes just were them powering up <laughs> to throw maybe three punches and then next episode. <sighs> yeah, I felt like that last time I listened to this. I'm like, oh my gosh, this static. How long can this go on? Eight minutes? Okay. <laughs> but... Really uh, great. I need to pick up some more Boris. Uh, Heavy Rocks is another one I want to find. Good buddy Tim, DJ High Noon, has pointed to me, uh, pointed these groups to me in person, actually. I learned about both of these groups. Um, first one, Freddie Hubbard, Keep Your Soul Together. Picked this one up when I think he and Supra Wes and I were digging. Um, where did I pick, I pick this up? Nope, it was Ron Haggerty and Tim and I. Picked this one up at Smart Punk back in January. And uh, Tim knows that I was digging into jazz this year. He said this is an essential. And ever since I picked this one up, now I see Freddie... Hubbard's um, name in this key albums <laughs> that I have and have been picking up. So yeah, great trumpeter. Learned about Freddie Hubbard from Tim, DJ High Noon. Another one that he uh, pointed me to, and uh, that was on the same day. This is Mandrill, just outside of town. He handed this to me and said, Brad, this is where Public Enemy got the beat for uh, By the Time I Get Back to Arizona, something like that, Arizona, off of their uh, Apocalypse 91 album. And uh, yeah, phew, this album is fire. Now, I love it for the beat, that one beat, but man, this entire album is incredible. Uh, their 1973 album, the Funk, got some jazz funk in there as well, got some soul. I'm going to play the track uh, Two Sisters of Mystery is where Public Enemy got that um, beat from. And uh, if you know that song, it's pretty evident. Yeah, they just lifted that and slowed it down a little. Uh, here is that beat by, yeah, here is that song, there we go, by Mandrill.
The third question is share your favorite or a favorite, I put that in parentheses, album in your collection because if I share my favorite, people are going to groan because I share that album way too much. Not even going to mention that album. This is a group I don't talk enough, about enough. Um, I learned about this group in 2011 in Oklahoma, hanging out with uh, my friend. We were both uh, visiting our alma mater, our college, and uh, yeah, in town in Tulsa. At a Best Buy, and I was kind of looking through the CD section, and, and he's like, I, I, Josh is the guy that I would go to um, before uh, the VC. Because Josh always had his finger on the pulse of new music. And yeah, so he was my go-to guy for all new music. And I'm like, hey Josh, what are you listening to right now? What, what do you recommend? And he hands me a CD and he's like, uh, LCD Sound System. This is actually the CD that I picked up. This is the vinyl. Yeah, I know. Um, but in 2011, picked this up. It's kind of the greatest hits, though not all the hits are on there. Um, but they redid those hits it just wasn't slapping out like songs from albums onto a new album to make uh, greatest hits they did different renditions of it i actually prefer this these versions over their original album releases um but yeah i love lcd sound system this is the london sessions um bought pick, pick this one up at park ave for Pretty inexpensive, 18 bucks. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, great album for 18 bucks. And uh, yeah, 2015, I picked that up. But I'm going to talk about another of their albums, which uh, really, really enjoy this one. And this is uh, American Dream, which is not their latest release, but it's the re latest release that I have in my collection. I have everything of. LCD sound system except for their latest and I think their debut This is happening. I think is the name. I almost picked that up in January with Ron and Tim But I was buying way too much stuff that day. Oh Man such a great great group great album. I like the is it Fabrato for something like that when a man sings in a higher register than Normally he can sing. Um, forget the front man. It's a name. Anyway, blanking. He does that. He does that well. Um, kind of almost has that uh, replacements type nonchalance to his song writing, song delivery, uh, lyric delivery type of stuff. I like that too. Uh, the song that I play, I always gravitate to, I used to, but we're going to go to Change Your Mind, uh, and yeah, great album by them. This is their 2017 album. Uh, here is Change Your Mind. Question four, shout out to two or three channels. Well, I can't just talk about two or three channels. I got way too many friends. Um, you said share two or three albums. I shared like 20. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. It was more like 10, but still, I couldn't just show two or three, Bill. <sighs> yeah, so let's, uh, let's get into sharing all of the friends that I have in the VC. Um, off the bat, some new ones that I've learned of um, during my contest last month. Uh, Isaac at Blind Island. Um, yeah, uh, newer channel, learning more about Isaac. Um, yeah, really, really great guy. 
uh, he had a great entry um, to my contest. And uh, yeah, Isaacs won. Uh, Rob Eisen is another. Um, Rob's, I think, still under 100 subs. I don't know yet, but uh, it's funny because I was planning on doing a monthly thing, and I haven't. This is a New Year's resolution thing, and I broke it. Um, but was wanting to seek out new channels and then mention them. Uh, Rob was one of the ones that I had sought out and was planning on. Uh, making that video even though I failed doing that but then he ended up making an entry to my contest which was pretty funny um, but yeah Rob Ison I-S-O-N is another one um, Rachel uh, the music ma'am everybody uh, like her her channel's exploding she's got a contest going on I need to dive into that and look into that because I failed to do her last contest jeez um, yeah, I've uh, been enjoying getting to know Rachel, uh, learned of her as she's posted on one of my videos this year. And so, yeah, uh, then you have the tried and true, uh, Jeff Kempen, Tim, DJ High Noon, Andrew, Tales from the Crate, uh, your channel, um, uh, you got John, uh, the digital gramophone, uh, Norman Maslov, Mazzy. You've got uh, uh, B-Side Records, David Newton. Oh, man. The list can go on and on. Uh, everyone that I've learned from, Barack P. Dub, Paul, Supra, Wes, Wes, um, Ron Haggerty. Uh, this is where it gets difficult. Uh, er <laughs> Eric Weinbender, um, Steve Carlson. It gets difficult to name all of these because then I forget people and I don't mean to. Mr. Hall of Fame. Um, yeah, uh, I've met so many great friends. Um, I'm not quite at 400 channels that I watch, but I want to say that I have close to 100. <laughs> and... Um, Lately, it's been difficult with everything going on in the world uh, and in my life, uh, just you know, relating to the virus and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I feel very behind in watching videos and keeping up with everyone. Um, but yeah, I'd love to get back into that. But there are so many, so many channels uh, out there, so many new ones. Um, Bernard Jean, uh, Hitch a Ride. Uh, Robert Z posts videos every now and then. Um, yeah, then more than now. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, there are also a lot of channels that I, I wish they would just start making videos again. I mentioned uh, Andy Borders and I mentioned uh, uh, Audiophile Laws and Miss uh, Learning about those guys and seeing where they are and then even Beninsky 707 as well so um and Vinyl Collector James I think he only makes you know his top 50 uh every year uh and uh yeah miss those guys um yeah uh so there's shout outs uh I'm still coming up with names uh, a vinyl low Emma. <laughs> I just I, I feel like like I, it, it could never it never stop. And for the bonus question or questions, because there's two parts to this bonus question, what is your favorite album and song off of that album within the Phil Collins era of Genesis, which I believe was seventy eight to ninety one. Hope I'm remembering that right. I, I learned it from you. I know I learned it correctly. I just hope I'm remembering it right. Um, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Awesome. Um, so I found where you stated this. Hope it hasn't changed <laughs> in recent months. I'm going to guess it hasn't. But the your favorite album, I'm going to educatedly guess, is Duke. And that your favorite song is Duchess. I uh, reviewed a video that I captured on my phone of your video. 
I reviewed that just just real quick before <laughs> making this video. But Duke is your favorite album, and Duchess is your fav the favorite song off that album. Yeah. Um, Bill, uh, thank you for your friendship. Um, these last few years, I've really uh, enjoyed getting to know you, and even more so in Facebook chat. Um, yeah, really, really awesome. Congratulations on 700 subs and the two-year mark. Uh, you're well beyond the 700. I didn't look, but I'm sure you're you know, probably close to 800 by now. Uh, every, I feel like everyone is making an <laughs> entry to your contest, which is way awesome. And now I can actually watch some. I think I only watched Steve Carlson's. Um, don't like watching people's entries uh, until I have mine all planned out and, and everything. So... Um, yeah, uh, thank you for your support, uh, for my channel from the very beginning. Um, yeah, I hope that, uh, I'm able to show you half close to <laughs> as much support as you do me. Thank you. Um, and yeah, I hope you're doing well, man. Um, we, uh, it's, it's a little dreary out today, so I think we got your weather, which we need. We need the rain. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know why I'm starting to talk about weather, you know, conversation goes downhill when people are talking about weather, but anyway, hope you're doing well, man. And, uh, yeah, look forward to talking with you in chat and in the comments, uh, of your videos and my videos and, uh, everyone hope you're listening to great vinyl and, uh, we will see you all next time.